Welcome to Ironside's Cognos ICM Tutorials. This tutorial is part of Ironside's ICM Calculation Series, where we help you, the user, build your understanding of creating calculations by breaking the learning into small chunks. Calculations are the core functionality of IBM Cognos ICM. They are what allow your organization to transform its data into meaningful compensation results. In this tutorial, we will review the calculation wizard of the most commonly used and most flexible calculation type. These are called user-defined calculations. We will walk through the development of a simple user-defined calculation to illustrate its basic functionality while highlighting a few best practices as we go along. We will then create a copy of the calculation, perform a few edits, and review the results of both calculations. Together, these two calculations will form what is referred to in ICM as a calc stream. As we continue through our user-defined calculation series, we will continue to build on this simple calc stream by adding calculations with more advanced functionality. So let's get started. As our example for this tutorial, we will use the following requirements. ISG Insurance pays its producers a percent of premium using a flat rate for individual business. It also pays its producers a dollar per contract amount for group business. The first step is to create a new calculation. From the home screen of ICM, open the Composer module. Once Composer is open, right-click somewhere in empty space and select Add a Calculation. Please note that the look of the wizard will vary depending on the version of ICM installed. However, the key concepts described for each part of the calculation wizard, as in sources, restrictions, formula, and partitions, apply across the various versions. When the calculation wizard opens, notice that there are four types of calculations that can be created. For this tutorial, we will select User-Defined Calculations. We will create a user-defined calculation that will retrieve only transaction data for individual business. There are five steps in creating a calculation. At the main tab, type a unique name for the calculation. During the design of your model, it is considered a best practice to employ standard naming conventions prior to development of the model. For example, to distinguish credit calculations from payout calculations, prefix credit calculations with CRD and payout calculations with PAY. Also be sure to add a description to the calculation. As a model grows, descriptions provide definition to the calculations in your model. Doing this helps with future maintenance of the system because it provides a useful summary to those who administer and build enhancements to the system. In the Define Data Sources panel, the data required to perform the calculation is selected. Data can be sourced from any non-system table or from results from other calculations. There can be one or many data sources selected. However, to maintain system performance, it is best practice that calculations be kept as simple as possible and have as minimal sources as it is needed to produce the required results. To search for available sources, either begin by typing the name if you know the source, expand all to view all sources, or filter. Best practices dictate that the first source selected should be your primary data source and other data that is required to parse and calculate your data be secondary sources. For this simple exercise, we have created a table that has transaction data. We will select this table, PL Transactions, as our primary source. No other sources will be needed at this time. In the Formulas tab, we can use any numeric value to set up the calculation we need to fulfill the requirement. As mentioned before, when designing and building calculations, it is best practice to keep calculations simple. Complicated formulas, particularly those with heavily nested if statements, should be piecemealed or broken up into separate logical calculations, with results from one calculation supporting the input to another calculation. This allows for improved performance, as complicated calculations take more time to process. Simpler calculations also allow for easier troubleshooting and maintenance. Another key best practice when building a calculation is to always use an aggregate function with calculation formulas. Aggregate functions ensure accurate results, particularly when combining multiple data sources, because it tests that results are unique on the partition defined. Also, calculations that don't include an aggregate function take longer to run, which can impact the overall performance of the model. 
The available functions are in the select function dropdown. Sum is typically the most frequently used function. However, there are other functions available, which will be driven by the defined requirements and the purpose of the calculation being created. Once your formula is created, you can format it by selecting the Format Formula button. Partitions in ICM determine how calculated results are grouped. The partition is set by selecting the data source columns that are required in order to organize your results into meaningful buckets or subsets of data. For example, in our scenario, we need to have data grouped by both a payee and product type to later determine the correct rate to apply. On each tab of the wizard, there is a preview button that allows for the user to preview results. Preview allows for users to perform quick tests of calculation results to validate if a calculation is working as expected. Preview is spontaneous and does not commit any calculated data to the database. While preview functionality can be a useful tool, if there are large amounts of data in the model, preview can cause the application to hang. If we only partition by payee, the two different prod type records for the same payee would sum, and the results displayed would not provide the data needed to determine the rate to apply for payout. The importance of partitions is twofold. First, partitions allow for calculations to run faster, as the partitions limit how much data the calculation engine needs to evaluate. Second, the columns selected from your data source to form the partition become the primary key to that particular data set which means that any duplicate records will aggregate on the calculated value. Note that the value itself does not become part of the key. Also keep in mind that only non-numeric fields can be used for partitions. There are three best practices to keep in mind when defining partitions to ensure that database resources are not compromised, all of which would impact runtime performance. One, limit the number of fields that are in the partition. 2. The order of partition fields is important, and so data selected for partitions should go from least granular to most granular, or least detailed to most. And lastly, include a date field partition. Restrictions allow filters or conditions to be set on your data so that it limits the results to just the exact data output needed. For the purposes of this tutorial, we want to exclude transactions that are not individual business, so we will set that restriction in the Define Restrictions tab by setting the condition to I. To complete this tutorial, we will copy and edit the calculation that we just created in order to capture group business. First, right-click on our calculation and select Copy. In the white space of the composer, right-click and select Paste. Because each calculation name must be unique, add a suffix. Then select Auto Match to map the source data. Now open the copied calculation and edit the name and description in the Type tab. Since we want a new subset of data from the same transaction table, our source will remain the same. In the Define Formulas tab, we will edit the formula since we need to capture a different metric for applying a group rate. In our scenario, group business pays by contract count, whereas our individual business pays on premium amount. The partitions in our example will also remain the same. In Define Restrictions, we edit the condition or restriction to bring back group business by setting the business type to G. Select Finish, and now you can see that we have the two calculations we need to separate group and individual credits and results that will then be used to build on this calc stream. After calculating the model, you will be able to see results from the two calculations created. 
In this tutorial, we walked through and explained the functionality of each of the tabs in the user-defined wizard. We showed you how to create a new calculation and how to copy and edit an existing one to create a new calculation. We also outlined the best practices to keep in mind when designing and building calculations. We hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please check out additional tutorials on our website.